Okay, so if you're watching on YouTube right now, I've got the most badass Chewbacca mask ever that Michael here won at a white elephant party from known felon Stephen Ellis. <laughs> <laughs> I'm kidding. He's not a felon. He's a very talented writer, producer, and actor. Um, it's our last episode of the year, 2018, man. Crazy. It went by pretty quick. <laughs> and for those of you listening, just a heads up, we're going to take a little bit of a break, like a couple of weeks or so. We'll be back in the studio January. In the yeah, in the new year. And it's going to be in our brand new studio. That Adobe's building right next door. So we can't wait to show that off to you guys. Just for us. Just for us. Uh, we'll be playing reruns on uh, Thursdays of some of our best episodes, I would say. Every, you know. There you go. And I'm going to leave those as a surprise. Uh, they're probably some of the funniest episodes we've done. And some of the funnest, too. Uh, remember to subscribe to us also on iTunes. And also, we are on Spotify. And subscribe to our YouTube channel as well. So you can watch all our ridiculous shenanigans and uh, get to see our awesome guests as well. Um, I'm worried that we don't have the rights for Chewbacca. No, I got the right. I bought the rights. I bought the rights. There we go. <laughs> <laughs> um, real quick, before I introduce our guests for today, I just want to say thank you to our amazing listeners and fans, you guys. Seriously, I love you guys more than you know. I'm so glad that the show has had such a positive effect on you guys. And in not just the kind of way where like you're entertained by the show, but a lot of you have actually messaged me and said, hey, I'm getting more into uh, working out. I'm exercising more. I'm trying to adopt a more positive lifestyle from some of the guests you've had on, some of the stuff you've talked about. And that just makes me really happy that the show is having that kind of positive effect. So um, I'm really grateful for that. I'm grateful for you guys. Remember to subscri uh, subscribe, follow us on our social medias because we'll be teasing the new studio as well. Um, I'm really thankful also for Adobe Radio for everything that you guys have done. To Nice Guy Digital, to Brett and Katie at the Brett Davern Show featuring Katie LeClaire. Um, everybody here at Adobe, you, Mr. Michael, for all the help that you've uh, done on the show, all the work that you put in, and also for Steph Jula, our awesome social media producer. Uh, the I'm just really thankful I have such an awesome team and some great people around me. Uh, so, yeah, I'm in a very grateful mood. I'm excited about 2019. Mm. Big things ahead that we're going to announce on our social. We have some amazing guests lined up that I can't even say yet because Steph's like, that's not good social media. Announcing this soon. <laughs> so I'm like, okay, I won't announce them this soon, Steph. Whatever. <laughs> Kidding. Uh, no, we have amazing guests coming up. Our guest today is a return guest, probably one of my favorite people we've had on the show, Caron. Caron Brar. Seriously, fun guy. He's a, a young whippersnapper. <laughs> Oldest thing I've said in the world. <laughs> I'm 102. And also, his friend joins us on the show, Sophie Reynolds. Uh, she's also an actor, and both of them together... I think they've worked on something recently, so he wanted to bring them on. I'm not sure. I can't confirm that. We're probably going to get corrected as soon as the as we bring them on. Probably. Probably. And am I spreading false rumors about Karan? Yes. Do I love doing that? Yes. Am I gunning for all of his roles from now on? Yes. <laughs> Karan, I'm coming for you. I'm just kidding. You're a good guy. We have coffee, I think, in a few days. We're going to chat life. Business. Very nice. Yeah. Hey, Michael. Yes, sir. This is the last one until a while. You ready? I'm ready. All right, here we go. Ladies and gentlemen, let's give it up for Caron and Sophie. Should I say again how amazing <laughs> this intro is? You have to. Again, okay, once sorry. again. Yeah, what do you guys think of the intro? It's fantastic, and I love it. Yeah. Who made it? Oh, my brother, William Keish. Well, wow. look at that. We haven't asked that question before. Shout out no. to William. <laughs> <laughs> uh, we're closing out the year super strong uh, with uh, Caron and Sophie. Thank you. I'm so excited so to be here. So I can't believe we're, you're closing the year with us. Wow. I actually, uh, yeah, it's, it's going to be uh, pretty fun. Caron was on before. I had a good time with Caron. We talked about a lot of stuff. Slightly traumatizing, but it's fine. You'll get yeah. through it. We talked about, do you remember what we talked about? I 
I couldn't completely recall what we talked about, but we covered a lot of subjects. It happens on this show, dude. We cover, <laughs> like, the, the most silly Billy things and then the most dark things and then the most, like, we got kind of political. I, but see, I like that better than, like, when, have you guys ever done those interviews where they're like, we Sam, so what's your favorite color? Mm. Ha, that's so funny. Yeah. Next question. Wow. How's shooting? Go-? Like, they just, they don't even pay attention in the, inter- I, I much yeah. rather prefer when you're just having a conversation with an interviewer, because it makes it more casual and uh, more comfortable than when it sounds, like, very forced and they seem like they don't want to be here. <laughs> Dude, that was the most Kim Kardashian voice. That was a very Kardashian voice. Ah, thank you. Comedy. Oh it told me how to, it taught me how to change my voice. <laughs> you, you also you also thought that uh, We Sam looked like John Mayer. I did. Oh, we my s- gosh. Totally. See? Oh, oh my gosh. <laughs> yeah, shut up. Yes, 100%. No, he nailed it. Thank you. Right? So, yes. right? Sophie, this is your first podcast. Uh, I'm my just going out strong. <laughs> That's my first entry into the conversation is that you do look like John Mayer. I don't, guys. Michael, can we please pull up a photo again? I. Hey, Michael, don't pull up a you photo. Really Hi, welcome back to Karin's World. I'm taking over the podcast now. <laughs> Come on. Oh, look shoot. At the- Oh, we lost the camera. <laughs> it's fine. This is worth it. For those of you watching at home, this I'm will be okay. you. Yeah. It's 100%. See? Also, that's a, that's a compliment. Uh, I, <laughs> I, could see, I could see it a little bit. Not like exactly. Like, you look like you could be related. Yeah, okay, related. There I'll you take go. that. I'll take that. There you go. It's like I just you're think, the... I just want to disagree with Karin. That's the that's the okay. main thing. Oh, that... that's my favorite thing to do in life. Yeah. Uh, Karin and I disagree on so many things. It's a uh, foundation of our friendship for sure. Oh shoot. You know what? You know what's funny? Guys. <gasps> Join the club. No joke. This was my outfit for this episode. No because way. sometimes we double up. Today was uh, a double up day. Yeah. And then people, by the way, people who are like, oh, we Sam, you wear the same thing every day. Can you change? I'm like, first of all, I can wear a white V-neck and blue jeans forever, and I'll be happy with that. So yeah. Absolutely. I don't care. Also, they know this. I'm immensely cheap when it comes to clothes. Yeah. So I will only purchase clothes unless I absolutely need it. If I need a new like uh, pair of black jeans, then yeah. I'll go out and get it. Yeah. But otherwise, I'll just repeat clothes nonstop because I, I sure. don't have that. Just, as I'm much as feels like, practical to me. I mean, as much as I'd love to spend four hundred dollars on expensive jeans and try to live a bougie life with Gucci belts, not for me. Gonna, yeah, not for me. Gonna I'll tell you what though. On that. If you're watching on YouTube, we're all matching. Yeah. It's the holiday spirit. It's amazing. Yeah. Oh yeah. It yeah, totally we didn't is. even think about that. That was no. a. Christmas, the holidays. I'm telling you, it's cosmic that we're all here together. Are you staying in town, or are you, are you leaving town for the uh, holidays? At some point, I'm leaving town to go see my dad again. Oh, nice. Yeah, yeah, and my mom, and my youngest brother. Nice. Shout out to my youngest brother. Got accepted to dental school. Wow. What? Ooh. Making those immigrant parents proud. Yes. Woo! Claps for that. My I sister very, very uh, just left dental school. <laughs> oh, she? No, she was uh, She was working to like get into dental school. Oh, and cool. Then she like came home and she's like, I think I want to be a publicist. And I was like, that's a drastic change, but okay. <laughs> <laughs> you know, you got to awesome. figure it out. Yeah, and I was like, look, it's, uh, it's really stressful and yeah. you're going to have to deal with really ridiculous clients but if you think it's gonna make you happy sure why not yeah yeah and my yeah. parents are like if if you make if you're gonna be happy with it go for it yeah hey live your life sophie i don't know anything about you that is totally I, fair i <laughs> i looked you up on imdb and wow. i i i trusted con yeah i was like hey I'm bring glad. a friend uh, and i was like uh, maybe i shouldn't have done that and then i was like i've got sophie i was like all right so far, it's working out, I feel like. I feel like I've got Sophie is like the highest bar I have to fill now. Um, <laughs> I mean, you weren't my first ask. You yeah, were like no, definitely my for tenth, sure. But, you uh, know, sometimes you, you get wait, to that. How do you guys know each other, though? Okay, so a couple years back, I worked on a show called Gamer's Guide with his best friend, Cameron Boyce, who he had been working on Jesse with the four years prior. Yeah. Cameron left, and he was actually still in the same lot working on his other show. Yeah. Um, and I became really tight with Cameron. And so then Cameron was like, all three of us would be really tight. And so we all started hanging out and we, you know, formed a little friendship, the three of us, and ever since. That's so cool. Yeah. It was probably like three, four years ago? Four years ago now? Yeah, four years yeah. seems about right. And you yeah. put up with Karam. You, you, you put up. You know it. what I do, but yeah. emphasis on put up, like that's just like really the yeah. epitome mm-hmm. of our friendship. Although sometimes we'll like 
<laughs> we'll, we have like a bit where we just argue for no reason about oh, for sure. things that aren't important at all. And we can tell that we're not being serious in an argument, but yeah. other people can't. So they That's get right. very uncomfortable it very quickly. It freaks people out. It's like the old married couple fighting sometimes. Yeah, we just yeah. get, we get into it. But. Yeah. Ooh. It's, yeah, the, like I like making other people feel uncomfortable. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> That's one of the best. Apparently we do too. Um, We're great yeah. at it. Experts. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. You have to do a lot of shouting, yeah. walking off angrily. You got to find the right place for it, though. You know, Marshalls mm-hmm. is a great place. Marshalls? Marsh- yeah. oh have you tried gosh. a Ross? I feel like it's a different experience at a Ross com- compared to a Marshalls. <laughs> Ross? <laughs> I, are, are you comparing you, Ross to Marshalls? Are, are, are you shitting on Ross? Because <laughs> Are you shitting on Marshalls? <laughs> <laughs> This is a real argument, by the way. Wow. <laughs> wow. Yes. I, Ross was my home, man. My uh, my Indian family and I, we we love a good Ross. Right. I'm not saying Ross is bad. But I'm you have to saying... love Marshalls, too. Yeah. Yeah. I don't know. It's I don't a... know? Yeah, I'm going to go with Wee Sam on this one. Wow. Sophie. Sophie knows what's up. Yep. You got to work your way. You, okay, first you go to Ross. You try to find something, specifically during the holiday season. Can't find something. Then you move up to Marshalls. If you can't find anything at Marshall's, then you go to Nordstrom's Rack. You know the thing about Marshall's, though? I feel like Marshall's has a better selection of also random things. Like, yeah. Ross maybe has a lot of clothes, but Marshall's has, like, more of just everything. Yeah. So you no. never know what you're going to find. No, but Ross has a lot of weird stuff, too. This is we're our... sponsored by Marshall's. Yeah, I was going to say, <laughs> this is, like, our marketing campaign for Marshall's and so Ross. So, like, hi, we're going to pull out all of our sponsorships for the next year, we yeah. because of this one episode. <laughs> That's fair. That's but it's, fair. I've always wondered, like, how... Because there's no order in which the employees place things in those stores. They in kind of Ross. just... Oh, you mean in Ross? Yeah, because it's chaotic. No, yeah, yeah. Ross. yeah, yeah, Ross. Yeah, for sure. <laughs> really? For sure. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Because yeah, yeah, sure. yeah, yeah, you want to go to a chaotic you can't, place? Yeah, they just look, throw things around. I'm not saying Ross is the epitome of class, but I'm not saying that Marshall's like is more better than Ross. Ross. Than a- <laughs> Ross is great. But you can't tell me that Marshall's is on another level of it. Ah! Karan, you're wrong. How am I wrong about this? Karan, you go into Marshall's, you're like, oh, I'm home. I'm home. Things are organized. Disagree with that. The people... I didn't know you were a liar. (laughs) (laughs) There you go. See, this is what I deal with every day. You say that like it's a disappointment. (laughs) No. Uh, I'll tell you what, though. What I will not do. And this is a little tip for everybody. I do. I finish all my Christmas shopping by December first. Nice. That's and so. And so smart. the first week, it all gets shipped out to people. Why? Because I made the mistake of years past to go to Marshalls on a Saturday during the holiday season, or a Ross, or go to Costco. <laughs> oh my gosh! <laughs> no, not Costco. Did you know? In Dante's Inferno, one of the levels of hell is being stuck in a Costco with people constantly bumping into you. Yep. That's around the eighth level of hell. I totally believe wow. you. <laughs> Costco is the worst place at the holidays. And the parking lot. I don't even want to go in the parking lot. No. That's well, just scary enough. You'll, you'll literally die there. For sure. Before you even get into Costco. At least there are samples in there. But right. not in the parking lot. Why is Costco so hyped during the holiday season? I don't know. Because there isn't really know, gifts you can get. You can only get things in bulk. Oh. There are, there are electronics right. and books and clothes, and they have all sorts of stuff. Hey, hey Connor, when did you come to the country? Yesterday? <laughs> um, I'm, f- once again, feeling very attacked. <laughs> I don't go to Costco that often because I have to call my mother and have her drive me to Costco because she has a card and I don't. Because I'm too oh, wow. cheap to pay for a membership. Mm. Well, I think we have <laughs> You want to out-cheat me, we Sam? You want to out-cheat me? No, I don't. Yeah. <laughs> this is a competition I will yeah. not be part of. <laughs> We were just arguing over a bill that we haven't even paid yet to a lunch we haven't even I gone know. to yet. I know. Yeah. I, 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 I am treating you out, though, because I invited you. That's the only And the next time you'll get, you'll get it. No, that's, that's funny, but my parents will legitimately kill me. <laughs> Dude, <laughs> I'll say this, though. Is one of your parents on Instagram or uh, is it your dad? Yes. Oh, God. Yeah. <laughs> Do we have to go? Harry here? is a social media Dude, legend. I, can I? Is he, he's watching. He's gonna probably watch this, right? Oh, which camera possibly. is which camera am I? No, I'll be with the one in the middle. Oh gosh, Harry, <laughs> you're in the middle. Harry, raise the good son. Raise the good son here, Harry. And I like your engagement on social. You're with it, and I recommend you do more. And any baby pictures you have a car on, <laughs> post them. Oh, Let yeah. us know. We'll post them. Send them to me. DM us. We'll post them on our social. 
Uh, I think that's the only. Are you red? I'm n- you're redder <laughs> than your he jacket. Red. He's redder than his jacket. <laughs> Can I tell you guys the funniest story? So um, I recently went to fly out to Albuquerque to work on this project, Star Girl, and uh, it's based off the kids' book. And at the same time that Star Girl was like starting up, yeah. they, uh, DC was also casting one of their superheroes for their TV show, Star Girl. So there was two simultaneous Star Girl projects out there. Oh wow! And so you know I'm. Very, uh... Just realize what story he's telling. Yeah. I forgot. Oh, it's great. It's a really good story. Yeah, so it's a really good story. I'm just preemptively laughing before and, your punchline. Um, <laughs> and I, I didn't really tell my parents much. I just, like, kind of called them up one day, and I was like, all right, I book Star Girl. And they're like, what's that? And I was like, it's a book. Don't worry about it. I'm yeah. leaving Albuquerque in two weeks. And they're like, okay. And that was the max of our conversation about yeah, it. Yeah, yeah. And so my dad, m- my sweet angel of a father, uh, decided to post a congratulations post on his Instagram. But proceeded to tag Star Girl, the superhero poster, got like a poster of a comic book hero, and then posted that. I was like, I'm oh. so proud of my son. And I had to text my father. I was like, Dad, that's not the right Star Girl. Yeah. And he was like, Oh, I thought you were working on a superhero movie this whole time. And I was like, I mean, it depends on how you look at it. But yeah, that was the time that my father posted about a project that yeah. I wasn't even on. So yeah, <laughs> it's really cool it's though seeing, great. seeing like. Uh, parents especially get really involved in like the social and learning how to do oh, yeah. certain things. I don't know if your parents are like that at oh, all. Oh, my mom, uh, my dad, not at all. My mom is. She recently followed I a bunch of my friends who like she's never met, and they were all like, "I think your mom just started following me, and she likes all of their stuff." So they're yeah. like, "Okay, we have to follow her back now." So now I have a bunch of friends who have like follow my mother on social media, and they all just like each other's photos, and it's the funniest thing in the world. When your mom likes any of my stuff, I'm so excited. She'll like it all. She loves it. Um, One of my friends, his dad's Instagram is like swaglord something something. Excuse me? Swaglord something something. Your dad's? No, not my dad. Oh, oh, sorry. (laughs) My friend's dad. (laughs) And uh, swaglord, if you're listening to this, uh, it's a really big thing when he likes your photos, because like... I think adults take liking a lot more seriously than we do. Because mm. sometimes we'll just be like, yeah, I'll just give that person a like. But for them, it's like, I am supporting them. I'm going to oh. double tap this image. Mm. You know what I mean? I have the opposite experience with my parents. I think they like everything. I think that's what my, my parents have done. Yeah. Mm. yeah. Really? But he's selective. Swag Lord or whatever. Uh, yes. More specific. Okay. Are your parents just on Facebook or Instagram or all of it? They're on all of it. And for the, it took the longest time for my dad to accept my Instagram request because he didn't know how to <laughs> request it. Amazing. Yeah. My dad had to ask me to follow him back. <laughs> yeah. My dad tried once to, like, create an Instagram account just to sort of follow me and my brother. Yeah. And he made it, and he never goes on it. And I've never followed him back just because I think it's hilarious because he'll always, every, every time he remembers that I don't follow him, he's like, you don't follow me, and he gets so upset about it. It's yeah. the best thing ever. One of the best stories my mom did with technology is the fact that she gave uh, iTunes the wrong year of her birth, and so we couldn't get into her account, so she had to start a new Apple ID account. Mm. And we told her, Mom, why'd you do that? She's like, I don't want them to know my real birth date. And I was like, <laughs> well, now we're screwed. <laughs> Wow. I was like, I get it, but all right. Well, there you go. That's funny to me. I just love the fact that your mom assumes out of all the other data that Apple is collecting simply off of your iPhone activity. Yeah. She's like, if I give them my birthday, I'm screwed. Right. This is the end of it. Right, right, right. That's where the line's drawn. That's very... I had to get a journal for my mom, and I was like, you need to start writing down all of your passwords because I am i can't keep resetting yeah. That's what we did for my parents, and my brother finds it hilarious. We literally have the password book. <laughs> the, yep. My mom has that, too. She has them all written down. Um, but I can't even give her shit for it because I forget my password, so I'll be like, oh, what did I maybe set this as? Like, And then I look at her passwords. It's very weird, but yeah. This yeah. this sounds bad. I just probably shouldn't be saying this, but <laughs> I keep like multiple passwords in rotation, so I know like okay, it's got to be one of these select passwords. I do the same. Yeah. Okay. Mm. Please, Russia, please don't try to hack me. Yeah. Uh-oh. She's already so, hacked. <laughs> it's already happening. I I I have a sentence and with some special characters that I use, mm. which I is like almost. Is, I swear. I. Now, not somebody's gonna try, but no, it's a very difficult. That's an sentence, interesting theory. Which you would never like. The sentence. Yeah. Mine is so random. Really? Yeah, super random. That's because you work for the CIA. Ever, I guess. Yeah. <laughs> no joke, though. I did have a neighbor uh, who had worked for the army, I think, or navy, and he had to go to his. He would drive to his 
job on the base and then come back. And then his password for his internet was literally the max, like, 36 characters, whatever you For his put. Wi-Fi? Yeah, because he did work from home. Oh, mm. goodness. Yeah. So he had to make... And it, he told me it's all random yeah. numbers and symbols and, like, with caps lock or whatever. I'm like, huh? <laughs> Don't want to be his friend. Yeah. Don't want to ask for that Wi-Fi password. I was just thinking about, in terms of, like, cybersecurity, I was watching one of those cinema sin videos of The Last Avengers that came out. And I was like, imagine how stressful it must have been to, like, transport that footage and get it edited and make sure no one hacks into your system. Because you're going to lose a billion dollars of profit if that if that film, even, in like, a, a snippet of that film gets leaked. Yeah. Yeah. Like, think about how stressful it must have been to, like, maintain all of that footage. It's getting harder and harder, I think, too, actually. They even have, like, for instance, I did this for my... What's going on? There's there's, there's sounds. Um, uh, people, there's gremlins somewhere. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> um, uh, oh, yeah, off iTunes, they won't allow you to screen capture or play it on certain things. So if, even if you buy the episode, you can't, like... You can't. Use record, it, and, yeah. yeah, yeah. Record it, like, because there's like this ir- invisible watermark. So they're getting sneakier and sneakier. That's kind of impressive. Yeah. Technology yeah. amazes me, though. I'm not very savvy, so mm. everything is like, wow. Where are you from originally? Portland, Oregon. Oh, cool. Yeah. Nice. So just a little up north. That's from a here. lie. Yeah. Okay. Well, it's not really a lie, but. <laughs> oh. <laughs> I get called out by my friends because they all Shut think fire. I've lied to them every time they figure it out. Okay. Oh, drama. I'm actually from Vancouver, Washington. Okay. But nobody knows where that is because they think it's Vancouver, Canada, or Washington, D.C., and they just sort of stop listening. Uh, but Portland, it, it's a suburb of Portland, Oregon. It's right across the border into Washington. So. Oh, so it's easier just to say it's, Portland. Yeah, it's okay, kind yeah. of like being from... I don't know, Echo Park and, like, not saying you're from L.A. to someone who doesn't know where that is. Okay. Yeah, yeah. So he's yeah. being a little dramatic. He's Come being on. very dramatic. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But you literally have to cross a state line well, to get there. that's the only thing is people think I'm, like, totally lying because it's a different state. But it's it's really not. I spent so much time in Portland. It's like a 20-minute drive. You, you know what? I think it's because it would take so much time explaining to them where Vancouver, Washington, it, if they wanted to know. Thank you. And but so you just don't want to say Vancouver, Washington, because people in the past have gone, oh, where's that? Yeah. And then you're like, well, it's right now. And so you want to avoid that conversation. We're where either you... instantly talking about Canada or they're like, where is it? And yeah. Canada, it's not even close. <gasps> Sorry, I don't mean to interrupt, but that <laughs> reminded me of unwanted conversation and with people who are way too like the same conversation over. So I get a lot. Yeah. What's your name? We Sam. What? We Sam. How do you say it? Mm-hmm. We and Sam. Oh, cool. Where's that from? It's Mediterranean. I don't want to say Syria because people are always like, oh, man, it's really wild. Uh, you have family there? And then I have to go down that road. So I just say Mediterranean. He's like, so I'm getting my oil change. Car's coming up. They're bringing my car. And this guy comes up to me. He's like, hi. How are you? What's your name? And I'm like, who are you? You know what? <laughs> First of all, no, who are you? Yeah. And so he's like, I'm, I'm, I'm We Sam. And he's like, what? We Sam. How do you say it? We and Sam. Oh, that's cool. Where's that from? And I had the papers of my oil transplant, and he tried looking at my papers. And I was like, uh, who are you? He's like, I'm so sorry. I'm I'm with Honda's um, buyback program. And I'm like, oh, okay. I have a 2009 Honda Civic Si, which is like a sports car, but they don't make it in that model anymore, mm-hmm. like okay. the shape. And so they're always hounding me. And I'm like, I'm not selling my car. I like it. Just mm-hmm. leave me alone. So he's, like, coming up to me. He's like, I see you have a... And I'm like, yeah, yeah, I know you guys. I'm not trying to be rude, but you guys have always asked me to sell it. I don't want to sell it. Save you some time. Cool. Well, where's your name from? It's Mediterranean, you know? And mm. I'm like, guy, stop trying to grab the papers in my hand that have my address and phone number and all this personal information. Do you know anything about personal... Ma- Worst salesman ever. Yeah. yeah. Anyway, a little, I got heated up about that. So, anyway, that no, me but that. I totally get that's my unwanted conversation is about where I'm from. So, I always just say Portland, Oregon, so much easier. Or, yeah. or hi, I'm Sophie Reynolds, and I'm from a small town called Vancouver, Washington. Well, where's that? Oh, up by Seattle? No, it's way closer to Portland. Seattle's yeah. like three hours away. Yeah, I'm with Sophie on this con. Hey, man, what's up with you, man? You changed. <laughs> you changed since the last Did I get podcast. worse since... You uh, got a since... little... I, we're getting the numbers in on this one right now, and... Um, 
Have point. you already tested this episode with it's, audiences? It, well, yeah. Well, yeah. It's live right now. <laughs> our numbers are at two. <laughs> <laughs> Is Michael one of them? Yeah, because he has, he's running the whole thing. Got yeah. you. <laughs> you know, it's Harry, your dad. It's yeah. more. <laughs> My dad just texts me. He's like, this episode shit. Do better. <laughs> Be better. Be better. Be better. Um, okay. You were working on something recently, right? Yeah. Stargirl that you talked about. That was yes. the secret one you couldn't talk about? Uh, yeah, was it? Probably. No. No. It was the fuck it list that I couldn't talk about for a oh. second. Um, yeah. So that's been a whole thing. So I'm okay. working on this film called The Fuck It List. Okay, cool. Um, or fin- it's finished and it's uh, in post right now. Oh, awesome. Great. Um, and Awesomeness TV developed it and uh, it's pretty much a bucket list, but they call it a fuck it list. And uh, I've been like posting about it on social media and I like, like I'll hashtag the fuck it list, but people just think I'm cursing. So they're yeah. like, what do you think you're doing? You Disney kid. Yeah, Carson. That's, that's so wrong. Yeah. Um, but that was that was really cool. It's um, I've never like done such a like techie film, I guess, oh, in cool. terms of like being so like social media aware. Yeah, like a lot of projects that I work on, we try to like skip over social media or cell phones. So um, it was cool to like work on a story that was really intertwined with social media nice. and kind of like the drastic effects that it can have on your like real life. Um, and then after that, I had a few weeks off, and then I went over to Albuquerque, New Mexico, to shoot Star Girl. That's awesome. Which, okay. Yeah. You've been busy. I've been trying to yeah. be busy as He's much as I can. You've been very busy. What about you, sir? <laughs> you busy? I've been busy lately. I'm You've been really on, busy. Well, yeah, I'm working on a show right now uh, called LA's Finest. Yeah. Uh, which is really exciting. It's still in production on our first season. Uh, it's with Jessica Alba and Gabrielle Union. And they're basically cops. I play Jessica's stepdaughter, so I'm not in the cop world so much. Um, but yeah, it's a spinoff of the Will Smith and Martin Lawrence movies, Bad Boys. Yeah. Uh, so it's in that universe for anyone who watches Bad Boys. Uh, so it's been really fun to work on, and I we're looking at uh, some sort of a spring release, but I don't have a date on it yet. Gotcha. That's awesome. Thank you. What a uh, network. Uh, oh, yeah, I totally didn't mention that. So Spectrum, the cable company, yeah. is launching new original content. Oh. Basically, I think that'll go on like their on-demand. Oh. Um, and okay. possibly online of some sort. I don't know for sure. Don't quote me. Uh, but Probably. yeah, so it's a Spectrum original program. That's, totally new. That's awesome. Thank you. Um, so you're in production. You yeah. finish up soon or sometime next year? We finish up early next year. Okay. Um, so we're kind of midway through our season right now. Great. Um, a little bit over halfway, which has been, it's been really cool. It's yeah. a very different experience for me, and it's a lot of really cool people are involved. Jerry Bruckheimer and Sony are mm-hmm. doing it. So I feel like I, it's been a big learning experience for me. Um, I, I love, I work a lot with Jessica. Yeah. Um, and, you know, she has endless amounts of experience. So getting to work f- with her every day and sort of uh, being around that has been really inspiring for me. Oh, that was great. Also, yeah. as your friend, you've had to do a lot of challenging stuff. Because, like, the I past have. two shows you were on was, like, one was, like, a sitcom. Yeah. And then one was more of... You think Hans was more of, like, a drama, but also... It's funny. I kind of say, like, I grew up with my shows because I did kids' TV, and then I did sort of a teen dramedy, um, and then now I'm doing, like, the adult drama that's uh, awesome and i had to I actually i totally forget every single time now because i'm <laughs> used to it but i actually get to buzz all my hair off i used to have a lot of long blonde hair so i did that for this most recent role which was kind of wild in itself it was like a big jump in and i've never done sort of a physical transformation like that for a role so that was cool that's cool what did you did you was it kind of shocking whenever you had to buzz it off it was it was super shocking getting the news was because i basically booked it and then they were like but will you shave your head? And I was like, whoa, that's a big, that's a big jump. But I just kind of agreed to do it within an hour. Um, and yeah, yeah the, and then, so by the time I had like two or three weeks to sort of get into the mindset of doing it while we were shooting, cause it's not, doesn't happen right away. Um, and it was, it was shocking. It was, it was a lot, but it was kind of fun. Like, I feel like I walk through the world like a completely different person now, which yeah. is cool. I think that'll open you up to for a lot of more 
uh, roles. Oh, yeah, it's already different. I, the yeah. auditions I get now for... Because I'm still sort of auditioning for films and stuff that come after shooting, and completely different. Everything is a much darker and uh, a little bit edgier, which is fun, because I sort of felt like I was very seen as the sort of... I guess you could say popular girl in high school with mm. her blonde hair and mm. the cheerleader. And I um, don't really identify with that as a person so much. Yeah. So it's kind of cool to get to be seen out of that in a totally different way. It's also interesting to me. It shows how much typecasting is a thing. Because I totally could have buzzed my hair off at any moment for anything uh, if someone just asked. But they sort of, I think, sometimes have a hard time seeing beyond what you are in front of them, which I think is kind of goes with our whole world. So it gets real deep there, but... No, you're absolutely right. But at the same time, I kind of see it from the producers and casting perspective. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. Like, when you look at someone you don't know very well, and that's the thing, nobody knows you. Very rarely do you get a producer who knows you super well. It's like, no, no, trust me, they can do this. So it's like their first impression of you. And so a lot of times that sucks because it does put you in a box or it does handicapped you in some kind of way but if you can learn to use that to your advantage when you come up with opportunities like this it's like ooh, now i can shift gears yeah and it's timing it's i think one of the primary components of what will shift that for you is focusing on your craft making sure you're you know a good actor you know? yeah practicing yeah. it constantly i don't know do you, do you agree Carl? yeah absolutely i i, I think that it sometimes is very frustrating to get pigeonholed by like casting or producers and feel get that vibe when you walk into a room or when you're fighting to get into a room of like, oh, no, we don't think this person is capable or just by their look. We just don't think they're right for it. Um, but I do think that there's a little bit of a rush and an excitement when you do focus on your craft and you can go in there and feel very confident with your own abilities and your own skills. Yeah. And it kind of... To a certain extent, it kind of sucks that you had to, like, shave your entire head off right. for people to be like, well, okay, maybe she can do this. <laughs> but at the same time, I, I think there's a level of excitement to proving people wrong. And, yeah, it does give you the time to – I think one of the biggest advantages you have right now is the fact that you've been able to work on your craft while you're also working. You're not yeah. working on projects where you're kind of just, like, tuning out and yeah. – you're just like going through the motions. Do you feel, did you feel tested on your show or were you just like, this was in your wheelhouse? I'll tell you what areas I did feel tested in. Mm. The technical aspects of acting, which nobody preps you for. Nobody teaches you. Mm, nobody. Not at all. And, and for instance, I'll, I'll give you an example. I had a big speech, a very technical big speech. And with the show for the people, you get a lot of good monologues which is so exciting as an actor but sometimes you'll have some technical jargon sometimes you'll have a lot of names and and you're trying to explain something complicated but it's it's written like it makes sense but you have to speak it in a way which people can understand while you're doing some kind of action mm. and then remembering which action you did on which line and which part that feels natural enough that not only you can do it once or twice but you can do it 20 times for all the different shots that they yeah. have to do that's the most challenging part that I've faced. And I've actually, toward the end of this season, I was like, man, I finally feel like I'm getting good at it. Took two yeah. seasons yeah. to really, because first season I'm like, oh my God, this is very difficult. You know, yeah. I, I'm, I'm just like praying for a scene where I'm like sitting down only. <laughs> you know yeah. what I mean? Just yeah. to like, because it's like sometimes very emotional stuff, sometimes very like technically like comedic stuff that we have to make sure we get. So that's that's the part that's technically challenging. It also kind of, as cliche actory as it sounds, like takes takes you out of being present. Um, mm -hmm. I, I was like, I was talking to Sophie about this. I'd spent seven years in sitcom before I'd like started reaching back into films, and that is so technical. It is the most technical thing you'll ever do, and everything has to match every single take. You can't. There's no room to be like, I'm gonna explore as an actor. The only place you really get to explore is like your jokes. And it's less about like, ooh, like what, what do I want to do with this? And it's more like what is going to make the joke land and making sure that you do everything. Like I got it. I got it. I, I, I had it, my continuity down down to the point where it, at your lines, I would just need to know what, what, which point of the line you were at. And I could know exactly where my body was at and what I was doing mm -hmm. and what I was reaching for. And on Stargirl, the funny thing was I'd worked with this actor 
Eli Brown on the fuck it list. And it was really cool to watch him work because um, he's this really talented actor, but also he um, he walks the line of like letting himself explore but not getting so caught up in the technical side of it. So he'll let himself like be comfortable on his mark and not feel like he needs to stand here and do this thing at this time. And on Stargirl, it was funny because I told my script supervisor, I was like, I'm sorry if I make you want to quit your job, but like this is like one of the first times where I, I have to force myself not to be so technical so I can be present in these scenes. Because the moment that I get overly technical, it just pigeonholes me and it forces me to, you know. Well, yeah, that's, I mean, that's the, the balance and, the, and yeah. the focus that needs to be done, I think, with most things. Mm-hmm. Uh, of Finding that balance of, yeah, I have to be present, but at the same time, there is some technical stuff that we have to adhere to. You know Absolutely. I mean? That's yeah. just part of the job, which nobody tells you about. It's hard, yeah. but it is like when, when you do multi-camera, it's so trained into you. And it's one of the only things you do like come away really confident in being able to do that and it is funny because I've done the same thing on the show now working with Jessica who's done this for years and she really walks the line too she's like I hate continuity I hate marks I hate all of it so she sort of has found this balance of like doing what they want and doing what she wants and it's been really interesting to learn from because it sort of gave me a lot of anxiety at first letting go of like did I set my drink down at the exact right time? I hope so. I don't know. I don't want to mess that up. Yeah. But you kind of have to let it go in order to be an actor. But it's hard because it's a totally opposite it for someone time. who had to, like, learn it and go the other direction, which is interesting. It, it also – I don't know if this bothers you guys as well, but sometimes I hate when acting coaches in L.A. offer on-camera classes or technical classes because I'm just like – just focus on the craft. Like, it's completely different when you're in front of camera and doing stuff. Because there's yes. so many more aspects to it. That is true. But I do think it's weird that nobody teaches it. What do you mean? Nobody teaches the te- technical aspect. The, I mean, they, I'm, to, sure, I'm sure like, some people They're like, do, oh, let's put a camera in front of you. That's the closest we'll classes. get to. Most classes. Yeah, to, but to not just, like, plop a camera down. She's, she's right. There's nothing been really close, I feel like, to the exact, to, or even close to what it's going to be like on a TV set. Because the thing that gets me is like, even if you're like, you're hitting it, right? You're making the scene work and it's like, great, two takes we got, or two or three and that's it. Okay, let's push in closer. You got to wait. Yeah. Wait. Great, bring you back in. Make sure you're on it. Especially with the longer the speeches are, the more dialogue. There's a lot of things that's going on, like even just acting wise. And then you put on top of it like, oh, I'm moving this... I'm showing them with these papers, pulling this photo up, giving it to her, making sure I take it back on this line, and then coming over and pointing to him and grabbing my drink and drinking it here, and then making sure I grab my backpack here, and then I leave at this point. I know it sounds simple to the person listening, but like, if you have three actions to do in a one-page scene, maybe one and a half, let's say, yeah. one and a half, that you have, there's so much focus and, and like, and and prep work. You have to know your lines so in in your bones so that when you're doing the technical stuff it doesn't matter what you're doing so that's why i still do my sunday class Mm -hmm. that's why also when i have big speeches i practice them everywhere in the car in the shower if i'm walking around my home if i'm going to my car while doing things that's what i always do is i practice lines while i'm just like moving in life smart it because it is the only way to program it because sometimes i'll like sit in my room and i'll get my lines down and then i go into a different environment i start saying them and i don't know them at all and it's because part of it was like a physical programming yeah and knowing that you have to do actions and stuff, which is a lot harder than you would think. Like, oh, walking and talking, but it's true. I think we talked about this last time. I brought this up. Um, A friend of mine will go to a coffee shop and run lines with a friend to make it sound, like, very natural and to, like, get it feeling in in the right environment. Because you're right. Like, when you practice it in your Mm. bedroom by yourself, like, it's so easy to kind of get lost in it or just program it in a certain way. So when you put yourself in a different environment, like a coffee shop or somewhere public or like while you're driving, it just helps you let the scene breathe a little bit, but also just make sure you can, you know, it's it's a part of you and you can make it work in any situation that the director puts you in. Yeah. I also think there's a way to use your actions to almost trigger memory. I, I figured that out when I when I was auditioning a lot and, you know, you hold your sides in an audition room for people who don't know. Um, usually most people choose to, some don't, yeah. but I always do. Um And I don't usually look at them. So I, like, memorize when I'm learning my lines when to turn the page. Mm -hmm. And that became, for me, some sort of, like, trigger on where I was within a scene. Like, it almost grounded me while I was in auditions, like, turning my pages, which is weird. I think it's I'm a very physical 
learner. Mm -hmm. Um, And so I've tried to do that too when I when I get on set and I know I'm like drinking something like, okay, use this almost to ground you instead of fighting your words. Yeah. No, that's, that's absolutely true. Especially if you have some kind of action. Have you ever done Meisner? Mm-hmm. Uh, yeah, I have. Okay. Very mm-hmm. similar, right? Same. If you have a good Meisner teacher, the best, my, the best thing about Meisner technique, in my opinion, is it keeps you present and teaches you how to listen to whatever they're doing. Mm-hmm. So it switches your lines up slightly too. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. 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 That's, it's really cool as, you know, as people progress in their acting craft, especially actors, I feel like they find new ways to just kind of settle into the role to really, and it just gets easier if they're practicing. You know what I mean? Yeah. Um, Is your show very word for word strict? Or yeah. Do your, oh, oh, yeah. There's no room for Im- improv at all, like even the slightest? Within the script, like you, you have to be word for word. Let's say at the end of the scene. Yeah. Okay, like you could put a button on it, but you can't just Very go crazy. Rarely. I, I, I say that it's a word perfect because the writing is so good. Yeah. And there's a reason why the comma's there. The beat is there. Mm-hmm. The looking, it gives you the camera angle to look behind you there. There's a reason for all that stuff. Yeah. And, be, and because the writing's so good, it's like, oh, yeah, cool. I just got my game plan. I'll just follow that. Yeah. I kind of like that. And I'm mm-hmm. one of, like, the rare few who sort of does. This is... LA's Finest is the first show I'm doing that we're not very word perfect. Like we stick with the general, but we're not we're not super on our words all the time. And it's all it's been exciting to kind of learn how to act like that. Yeah. But I think I was trained to be very word perfect early on. That that is like feels very home for me for some reason. But it, it, there there are challenges to both because you, when you go off script, you can easily trip up other people if you. You know, if you have a joke and you s- just twist the words a little bit, then the the person's punchline doesn't make any sense. So you kind of have to find that balance. Uh, but I kind of like word perfect. I'm weird that way. I like, yeah, you need to have, have you ever watched Always Sunny? Yeah. Oh, yeah. Okay. They're all Phenomenal expert show. improvers. Oh, first they're yeah. amazing at so, improv. Yeah, yeah, so that's why that works for them. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? But. You can't have one person trying to do their own thing and then other people trying to be a word perfect. That's rarely I works. think yeah. that that's the problem is if once your show, like once you guys all figure out whether or not you are a word perfect or you are an improv show, that's kind of the way to go with it. Like for us, yeah. since we sort of figured out that we aren't 100% on our words all the time, it's been fun. But my problem was always when everyone was on their words and then there was the one person who wanted to improv and then that was throw me and I never mm-hmm. liked that. Yeah. Um, on Stargirl, our director, Julia Hart, who's just a brilliant director and um she's she's very much an actor's director and the great thing was she and her husband were also writers on the script so she gave us a lot of freedom with our words mm. and she would she would always tell us she's like I'll reel you guys back uh, back in if I don't like what you're improvising and I'll let you know if I if I don't want um you to say something a certain way but like feel free to like I, I want this to sound natural and I want this to sound comfortable in your body so it's really cool because uh, you know I I would like work really hard to, you know, memorize these lines, but also what forces me to be present sometimes is cha- not that I would change like drastic amounts of lines, but just changing a word or two just mm. helps me sometimes ground it, ground it more and make it seem more comfortable to me. Yeah. Um, and yeah, cause like, that's what you want. You just want like human experiences on camera. And I find myself, if I get like too hyper-focused on lines, it, it, it takes me out of it. Mm-hmm. Yeah. If I just let my give myself some room to breathe, and I have a director who gives me some room to breathe, then I can like really give yeah. a performance I'm proud of. Would, would you say it's? Would you say it's too much work for you <laughs> <laughs> to memorize my lines? <laughs> so much work. <laughs> it's so much work to memorize lines and do the basic part of my job. Um, um, I get it, Karen. It mm-hmm. does. I will say <laughs> that. I will say that working on sitcom okay. and having to memorize and forget 50 page scripts every single week has for sure like screwed up my memory (laughs) seriously it hasn't made you stronger no not at all really because i'm just so used to it's like remember erase remember erase remember erase like i'm not supposed to like have anything down cold it's supposed to be like i should know the general gist of the line because Mm -hmm. on the day because if i i I used to be the way where i was like i need to know every single every single word and then when they would give me a last minute line change i couldn't do it because i would like freeze up and i was like "Ah, okay well how do i i keep like i would have to force myself out of it so i like learned Mm -hmm. to be more fluid with it and you never know like you could have a wednesday night run through and it goes horrible and they're like great we need to change most of these lines in these scenes and you have to show up the next morning at like 
seven in the morning and try to memorize these like seven page scenes. I forget how old are you again? Sorry. Nineteen. Okay. It gets better. <laughs> <laughs> I'm being dead serious. I, I hope it does. I felt really bad because I'm like normally like really like on my stuff. So I'm thirty one. Yeah. And I'm telling you, if you keep even if you're not working a period of time, at least once a week memorize like a sonnet or memorize a paragraph. Oh. And that's what I've been doing probably like all my life. Oh, interesting. You'll you'll get to the point where you can have a page monologue. Yeah. And it'll be down in an hour, less than an hour. Oh, dang. So that's where I'm at right now. Yeah. Memorizing that, lines has always been something that's not not too big of an issue for me. Weirdly okay. enough, I think okay, it's then, how yeah. my brain works. Again, it's like visualizing things, but I can't. If people tell me things, I won't remember Is them. But if I the... read it, I can. I got it down. How I'm, old are you? I'm 19, also. 19, okay. Yeah. Is this going to be the we're better than Karin show now? Oh, for sure. Well, I get it. It's facts. Yeah, <laughs> it's, it's just how it works. You can't argue with facts. It's what happens when you bring me, Karin? <laughs> 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 no, but I promise you, it gets. And some people's yeah. brains just naturally but you can more learn. inclined. I'm yeah. just. I'm honestly. I'm just trying to find the middle ground in my career right now because I've been on. Like I said, opposite side, super mm. technical, memorizing every well, single word, and letting myself be present and breathe in a scene, and just finding those middle grounds. Um, and it I is like, project to project. Yeah, it's project to project, and I like to pride myself on the fact that like mm-hmm. I try to be as accommodating. Um, as, as I can be on set and try to make life for the crew as easy as possible. Maybe we could talk about more on Monday. Is our, Yeah. It's Monday, Monday right? Uh, yes, Monday. Are we going to put it in our cal- Sophie, could you just wait while we organize uh, it? Yeah, um, for sure, for sure. <laughs> Oof. Um, no, seriously, we'll talk about more Monday, but I think what I've found and what I've noticed in not only my career but in, in a lot of actors' careers, when they began focusing on rather... And it's fine, like, finding that middle ground. Again, 19 is super, super young in terms of, like, the rest of your life. Hopefully you have a long life. Uh, I can't guarantee that. I Thanks, we see just got Really dark. appreciate I know, it. I know, it got yeah, super dark. Wow. Yeah. Well, it's the truth, guys. <laughs> <laughs> um, whenever you focus on the message, the story, and being truthful in that, within the craft, I think that's the main yeah. thing. And it, no, no matter what the circumstances are, and that relates to the project, is it word perfect? Is it, does it allow some flexibility? Is it a hard cast to work with? You know what I mean? Yeah. yeah. It's never going to be the perfect a storm or the perfect crew or the, whatever. There's always going to be some problems or whatever. I still, I still find it challenging whenever it's like my coverage and I've got three cameras on me and the crew and the cameras are moving. And my actor, who I'm looking at, has to be pinned in between two cameras. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? Like, yeah. that's Absolutely. just, I mean, I could complain about that, but it's just part of the job. Like, no, that's just the way it is. I have yeah. to deliver it that way. That's why I'm being paid. Yeah. yeah. You know what I mean? No, it is. It's, there's, yeah. it, it's challenging, but it also keeps it exciting because depending how every project is run, you learn a yeah. different way of acting almost for each project. Yes. Yeah. Which is so weird, and I never knew that going into this business, but... Every single time I work on something, there's some sort of thing that I don't like or there's something that I have to work around is kind of a challenge. And yeah. I guess it keeps it interesting in a lot of ways. Yeah. It's like you're fighting some dude and, and you're like, hey, could you not yell when you kick? It throws me off. It's like that. You can't. You can't. You just can't. Deal with it. Yeah, <laughs> exactly. Um, dude, intense acting convo. I know. We just got intense. super actory on all. everyone. I don't I care. Like I, it. I love it too. I, I love talking about acting. I love actory conversations. I can go on for days. It's really terrible. No one yeah. ever wants to talk to me about it. So well, I love losers, it. they losers. I know. Obviously. <laughs> I'll tell you what though. Um, we kind of had a would you rather game. A little, little switch it up Ooh. right now. You guys are for it. Let's do it. I thought I mean, it'd be fun. Yeah. End of the year. I, I, I love disagreeing with people in the would you rather <laughs> Same. world. Yeah, I get it. And I'll be honest with you, I might yell at you, Karn. That's, I'm not going to yell at Sophie because I just met her. Yeah, but, but I'll yell so. at Karn too, so it'll just be like a, a team thing. I'm so glad I invited you. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Mr. Michael! What are the would you rather questions? Enchant us. There are a hundred. Okay, oh my we're, definitely not, gonna do we're not doing all a hundred. <laughs> Spend three hours lot, on would you rather. A lot of them are meh. Okay, well, let's, so I'm let's trying not to, pick those. I'm trying to, trying to do the best ones. Have you found any? Um, if you need time, let me know. To, to find. Okay. Um, yeah. Would you rather have a cook or a maid? Oh. A cook. Because I like to clean. 
I do too. Uh, I would say, see, that's what I was going to say. Dorks. I'm the same thing, I think. I want to cook. I yeah. hate cooking more than anything. Yeah. I need I need stuff cleaned a certain way. Yeah. Yeah. And I'm the only person in the who world, can obviously. Do it. Yeah, yeah, for sure. The place I was staying in Albuquerque had someone come in and clean, and it made me so uncomfortable. Because <laughs> even though we're, they were, like, helping me out, I was like, I don't want you it's to It's also like be someone here. touching your stuff and... Uh. It wasn't even my stuff. I was staying in a fully <laughs> furnished place. Like. Oh, I thought you... Yeah. Sorry, that confused me. I thought you were in like some stranger's apartment calling a maid to clean up and then... Never yeah. Mind. That got uh, so confusing for me. Yeah. I murdered someone in an apartment in Albuquerque then had to have someone clean up. Yeah. Well, good old Breaking Bad situation. Right? <laughs> Classic. Uh, what's the next one? <clears throat> Would you rather have a 10-hour dinner with a headstrong politician from an opposing party... <sighs> Or attend a 10-hour concert for a music group you detest? Music group. Music group. Disagree. Politician. Politician, uh, really? You think you're going to make it miserable for me, guy? I'm going to make it miserable for you. That's <laughs> true. I mean, you could just kind of uh, laugh at them, too, which is always fun. That's yeah, true. or just, you know, oh, but get them also cornered f- in a certain... Fight em. Or fight. Or, yeah, physical violence. Yeah, yeah. that works, too. <laughs> so Wait, Michael, like, did you em. say it was a dinner? Or a dinner. A dinner. Or oh, wait, dinner. there's food. Food doesn't make a uh, drastic difference. Uh, I feel like I picked wrong, but it's fine. I'm just going to stick with it because now I said it. Music. <laughs> Music. Uh, I'm always uh, right. What else we got? <laughs> Would you rather live where it is constantly winter or where it is constantly summer? We already live in a place that's constantly summer. Summer, <laughs> summer, summer over here. Uh, summer, are we talking about like 90 and above? Oh, and then the winter is like... 35 or below? Does not specify. Okay. Let, I'm going to say, like, mm. if I could take my Portland summers, which are, like, nicely 80s and 70s. Like. Okay. No, but most <laughs> of the time, summers are, like, brutal. Like, lately, it's been <laughs> global okay. warming. Right? You know what? Uh, uh, let's, let's, let's go the extreme. Summer, it's 98 or above uh, constantly. Winter. And winter, it's 25 or below constantly. Winter. Winter. Oh, God. I still might have to go with summer. I've lo- I hate being cold. I hate it. No, I don't want to feel like I have to run out of my car to a building because I'm afraid of. But you being do. Cooked. You do in the winter too. I don't know if you've ever been to like extreme Midwest winters. Mm, You're like sprinting hard. between places. I haven't been to an extreme winter, but growing up in Seattle, I experienced a few uh-uh, brittle not. winters. I don't know, man. I think training. I'm trying to think <laughs> of training purposes. I do winter. <sighs> you can't, you can't, you can't train outside during the summer. I mean, that is. Can yeah, you really do twenty five below? Yeah, it's it's yeah. way better. No, than no, no 20, sorry, tw- twenty five degrees or below, not 20 like twenty five below where you're gonna. Oh, yeah. oh. And see, it's way better to go on a run when it's cold outside because okay. it kind of evens itself out. I mean, in Wisconsin with the wind chill. Yeah, in it's, Chicago. It's so Wisconsin, miserable. It's, yeah, negative, negative thirty. That's not, I've wow. never. I want to feel that. Never okay, but see, that that's before. the thing you've never felt. Like, I was born in Iowa. I don't really remember it. I moved you know, when I was two. But I have family there. I wait, visited. you were born in Iowa? How did you not know that? You never told you me You didn't this. know that, man? That's really we're weird. Best that friends. Yeah, that's yeah. actually really, I wow, can't you, believe you didn't know that. I, you, you never, anyways, mosquitoes. What's the next? No, no, it's mosquitoes. Fine. I don't want to be shit on yeah. for the next 15 uh, minutes. Mosquitoes. <laughs> we don't have mosquitoes. <laughs> Let's move on to the next would you rather. Because I mean, you are knows. a terrible friend. You should have known <laughs> This was a mistake. <laughs> Honestly, I forget all the time. It's fine. Um, Since the girl that was born there. But yeah, I don't know. I think I'm going to stick with Summer on this, but that's just all right. me. All right, What's, what do we got next? What do we got next? Would you rather have your first child when you are 18 or 40? Weirdest question asked. 40? Like three people. Oh, let's see. 40. Um, yeah, I would know more. Yeah, 40. Yeah. We're all across if the If I can now. still have a child at 40, like, down. Yeah. Also, even if I, like, die around 50 or something, at least I've spent my entire life building up a savings so for them to, like, fall back on. Oh, okay. Oh, you, that's very sweet of you. You know what yeah. I mean? Yeah. Car? Look at that. Me planning. It's my Indian heritage. <laughs> Over planning. <laughs> Angel. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> would you rather be filthy rich and live 400 years ago or be poor but live today? Oof. Oh. Ah, uh, poor today, man. Yeah. I, I kind of think so, too. Uh, indoor plumbing. Thank you very much. Yeah. Next question. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> as much as I would love to poo-poo also, in a hole. Also, less war is, you know, bonus. And What'd you say? Less war. Like, oh, 400 oh. years ago, everyone was just constantly at yeah, war. Yeah, it was quite chaotic. I don't know. You, you could get away with murder so easily That's back true. Then. That's, like, actually a thing. You could totally... Yeah. There's no DNA evidence. That's so easy. Uh, Car- by Car- the... Sorry. No, Car- I, said, guys, I could say Karin could murder me, and then nobody would blame Karin. Yeah, look at my face. It's so I cute. Would, I would definitely blame you, him. Look at this. 
You think anyone blamed this for murder? No. You no. kill like Last 40 person. people and they'd be like, oh my god, no. No. That's it's not Disney him. Channel's Karin Ferrari. He would never kill it. <laughs> Karin's your biggest serial killer 400 <laughs> years ago. Uh, by the way, the jinx. Um, she got me hooked on the jinx. Uh, Great serial killer. Best Duh. murder no, documentary. Oh my gosh. It? Okay, so it's about <laughs> Robert Durst. It's on HBO. It was years ago. Oh, I don't um, know. But no, I just realized no, a bunch of my friends had never seen it. It's it's really, it's really Is interesting. Is it about real life? It, oh yeah, it's real <clears throat> life. It's a documentary. <clears throat> I can't. Real and life. Guy got away my, with murder. Like, my life, there's so much stress already. I'm like, I don't, I don't want to like. It is. Oh my god. It's satisfying. It's not stressful. It's really satisfying. Oh. Like you just, want. Just that sounds like, dark because it's about dead people. But no, it's like. Okay. The, you will understand. You'll be like, yes, catch him. That's great. Okay. Okay. All right. I dig that. Yeah. The jinx. <laughs> the jinx. This is. I mean, I'm. I, you don't have to answer, but this is kind of a funny one now. You know, considering. Would you rather meet the president of the United States or a movie star? <laughs> right now? Right now. <laughs> exactly. Wow. Or is it like Obama era? Because no, 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 no. No, that is really, that's a very funny question. Okay, that's so easy. A celebrity. Crowd. Obviously. Yeah, right. I guess I gotta go with the movie I, star I, here. That's well, why I think it's... What do you mean, just person. meet them? Just like, hey, what's just up? Like, or like, yeah. actually talk with them? Could I tell them to fuck off if I met Donald Trump? Probably. I mean, you could. I mean, there, there are no specifications you, on this. It's, it's right. a free country as of now. You know what? <laughs> you want that opportunity? I think I, think I might get arrested, <laughs> so I'll yeah. just stick to meeting a celebrity. All right, all right. That's, that's what great. I would do, too. Yeah. Yeah. Would you rather be an unknown Major League Baseball player or a famous badminton star? <laughs> <laughs> I I would rather go with the badminton star, because that means you're really good at badminton if you're famous at it. Yeah, and think about what, like, <laughs> that's the most ridiculous job ever imagine going to a bar and being like yeah i'm a professional badminton player but imagine being that good at badminton you just like blow everyone away all the time I yeah i agree with you guys that's the that's the only answer <laughs> yeah let's see would you rather be four five or seven seven? Four five. Mm. Uh, is already a struggle so four five actually seven seven you know why? <laughs> Short lifespan yeah. with giants. Oh, yeah. Bad circulation. Forgot about that. It's like you can't ride roller coasters and stuff. I don't know. Yeah. That I just be cozy cool. all the time. They're like, hello. Yeah. Hello. yeah. I'm cozy. <laughs> <laughs> the boy, like, why was that's, that what you thought of? That's my LKW, little kid, Wee Sam voice. Oh. Yeah, yeah. So, yeah. Hello. Hello. I'm cozy. Uh, does your voice change when you're four or five? Uh, uh, okay, it does. Mind your business, Colin. <laughs> Would you rather be stuck on an island alone or with someone who talks incessantly? Alone. Alone. Oh. Yeah. Dude, I'd murder that person by oh. the end yeah, of the day. Yeah, yeah, I probably would too, so I guess alone. You know how, how much I would entertain myself if I was on a desert <laughs> island stuck? I feel like you would. I'd want to be on a desert island with you. You don't oh, bring, you. bring all the entertainment. Very true. Also, I feel like you have great survival instincts. That's true. So I could like put building yeah, a treehouse on your shoulders, and I'll be like, I'll try to figure out this water situation. <laughs> Karin and I are not great with like the outdoorsy <laughs> survival things. Okay, speak for yourself. Well, I'm no. out of Hey, I watch a lot of Survivor, so maybe I could do it. You're telling me that watching Survivor equals actual survival <laughs> skills in the wild. I mean, I know how to build a fire without Do you, flint. Sophie? Yes, I do. You just have to wow. have a pair of glasses. But this small things, anyone wear glasses in this room? I watch, I like, I have a thing. The reality show Survivor is, like, my, one of my favorites of all time. I'm one of the only people I know that still watches it, but it is so good. Wait, Survivor, the where they vote off people off the island? Yeah. Oh, I thought you meant like the guy who goes by himself no, in the woods. No, no, I mean like person. actually like Survivor, the the reality mm. show that nobody watches anymore but yeah. me. Yeah, I've legitimately so like good. called her late at night and she's like, "I'm sorry, I'm watching Survivor. I can't talk right now." Oh, <laughs> how is that still a show? I I don't know, but it's still like of one Sophie. of the <laughs> highest rated shows on the air right yeah. now. It's insane. What? Yeah, it, it like tops its ratings a lot of nights. Wow. It's amazing. It's Jeff Probst, man. He's a genius, but... Dang. Okay. Sorry. Crazy times. Rant about Survivor. <laughs> no, I like this. This is... Honestly, I mean, go watch this. it. The old seasons are on Hulu. I got another friend hooked. It's it's a good choice. Also, can we talk about the fact that you have to pay for Hulu and they also have ads? Thank you so much! Uh -huh. Oh my gosh! It drives me up a wall. I'm yeah. paying fifteen dollars a month. I don't get it. If I legitimately don't get it. If you're paying fifteen dollars a month, you have the you have, you have the, the commercial premium, list. which is what I have. Which is what I have. Because I couldn't and, put up with the commercial. Wait, but listen, I wasn't do wait, what's the what's the wait what? It's 
It's like eleven bucks, and it's without commercials. Yeah, it's like only no, a couple no, no. dollars. No, no, eleven. More. Eleven bucks is with commercials. Fifteen dollars. All right, hold on. Let me is look. limited. Commercials. Oh, I'm. I'm I'm yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I last I was, time I, I was checked, grandfathered I couldn't because I think I'm they took out. I'm literally going to Google it. Do you right have now. the no ad option? Yeah. See, I. I think I was grandfathered in. Wait, wait, wait. What do you mean? There is an option for no ads. Yeah. There is. You just pay a slight bit more. But that's ridiculous. <clears throat> I'm already paying for a service. We shouldn't have to like pay. Okay, for... Okay, so it says it says commercials is like eight dollars a month, and no commercials is twelve dollars a month. Wait, this is not right. I. It's pay... eleven ninety nine. So that's why we thought eleven. Wait, I need to check my membership. I'm so bothered. Because I'm paying money on the max amount. Like, I mean, unless me. they raised it since this article was I said. I think they probably raised but, it. But, I mean, I, that's what I'm, I pay. I'm, I'm, I pay 12 bucks a month. Karen, I'm telling you it's worth I'm it. I'm so bothered. Because I, it is ridiculous. I, I get commercials. I don't want commercials. I get commercials, too. I hate yeah, it. It, it makes no <laughs> sense. I'm really seeing... By the way, speaking of ads, um, I saw this weird crossbreed of an ad between Mary Poppins and Nissan. Oh. Yeah. And, like, I don't know who sat in a boardroom and was like, hey, guys, mm. this is the collaboration we need on I our mean, five second I mean, we app. are talking about it right now. <laughs> I, I agree, but I've never, like, I don't know the jump where they're like, ah, oh, I love Mary Poppins so much. True. I should get a Nissan now. True. Like, it just doesn't make sense to me. Like, the, and also the jump to it, like, I've seen ads where they're like, oh, oh. we, like, you know, we use <clears throat> these computers to make this movie or whatever. But they were just like, we had to use a lot of special effects and a lot of advanced technology on Mary Poppins. Yeah. And we did the same with Nissan. I saw that, yeah. Yeah, and it was like... You want, you want to know what's really ridiculous? Um, I really love the show LA to Vegas and it got canceled. It wasn't on Hulu anymore. Yeah. So I bought it on Amazon, and before every single episode, they play a fucking commercial. And you purchased it on Amazon? Oh four Fox shows that all got canceled or are canceled. Oh my gosh, that's <laughs> wow. actually really funny yeah. that they... Before canceled. before and after every episode. You have Prime? Yeah, well, it's I, I bought it. I spent 20 bucks to buy the show the whole season. And they still play ads. And that they, pay ads, they play ads at the beginning and the end of every episode. That don't even matter anymore on canceled shows. Exactly. They're wow. like, good what? <laughs> Ghosted. <laughs> Like, wow! It got canceled. By the way, Amazon's losing so much money on Prime, with how many packages are being shipped. There's no uh, way. Why would they? No. They would just charge would, us all more. Where did then. you read this? No, just like it's just the shipping costs of no. like having paying everyone's shipping costs. No, they they make they make money. I know they're making money, but there's like still a little bit of a deficit. Karin likes to think he knows the like inner workings of every structure nice. of business. Simmer, simmer no, he down. does this all the time. He's like, there's no way they're making money. I'm like, dude. No, I agree that Amazon's how, making money, uh, but I'm just like that's there's still like that 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 shipping bill's got to be a lot, right? No, it, no, it's not. They use outside. Um, they don't use like the major ones for a lot of that. They oh. use like independent uh, couriers. Even the U.S. freaking postal service. Whenever they lost my trade-in iPhone two years ago, and I was like, nice. "Hi, why haven't you received it yet?" I said, and they, dude, they're like, "Oh." The U.S. Postal Service uses another used another one to ship it. I'm like, excuse me, what? They can't do their job, so they're hiring other people to do the job that they say they're supposed to do. Oh God! And that's so that's that's really why. bad. So they use third party uh, shipping people. That well, that makes, makes so a lot much. of sense then. Yeah, because yeah, well, I was just like I. You should have seen the Twitter war I started with the USPS. For that. It, it did it go viral? Uh, it, it did not, but I was. <laughs> listen. You were I ready never, for it, too. I yeah. was. I never do stuff like that, but, oh, man, I went in guns blazing. Did you get, like, a sweet response from a customer service person going, hey, we Sam, could we take this to DMs I figure got, this out? No, I got a response from somebody who used to work at the United States Postal Service, got me the number for the manager at the Postal Service that they lost my package at, and they said this happens often. Then I started contacting the people at the third-party shipping that then I contacted with AT&T. She got my personal phone number, and I got her personal direct line, and we were contacting each other for about a week. Oh my god! Before this thing was resolved, and then toward the like middle end of this whole scenario, then USPS tweets it. I mean, hey, we are be happy to help you. And I'm like, too late, guy. Oh. Bye bye. No, I would have given yeah. that up. Also, I, at which oh. point, like, I could easily see like, okay, a package got on the wrong shipment of something, so right? I stole it. But like, a lot of these are automated systems. That need to be like the packages are scanned when they like enter a port and like how how do you just like you know lose a bunch of packages? They, at once? It was stolen. Yeah, you have people on the inside who just they'll scan it and so, be like, oh, it's still in in on on the way or whatever. But yeah. they'll just open. They'll know what it is. Yeah. Damn. People, That's man. Nuts. 
Well, anyway. I think, uh, in all honesty, I think Carlin stole it. Yeah. I think you work for the third party. I believe you. Oh, damn, they got me. That's <laughs> <laughs> how I make fun. <laughs> uh, burned through my coup again, so now I'm just going <laughs> sneaking in as a mail worker and I hope stealing not. iPhones. I hope not. Coogan cap? Good old Coogan. No. My, Wait. My mother gave me a very stern talking to when I turned 18. She said, mm. don't you dare touch that money. Yeah. Um, because you're not spending it on anything stupid. You're going to be yeah. responsible. Yeah. You just spend it on hair products. Feel really hurt, but my hair feels and looks <laughs> great. <laughs> that was a... Uh, that was a compliment, if anything. Thank you. You have great hair as well. I know. You How do. long does that take? And the what mornings? do you mean? Like, to just... Because it's got, like, the perfect... Swoop. Yes, it's got it's a great It's a good swoop. hair day. I usually wear beanies and uh, hats, or I don't wear anything. This because... is me growing out a buzz yeah. cut right now. It's very interesting looking. Yeah. Goes through phases. Can I see it? Yeah, do you, well, I don't know what it looks like, but we're gonna see. Oh, it's great. Oh, is it? Sometimes yeah. actually wearing a hat helps because it like flattens it all. Yeah, yeah, it looks good. That's why Thank I wear you. hats. Thank yeah, you. yeah, yeah. Thank you. No, uh, I'm getting good. a lot of gray hairs. Um, mm, yeah. You pull it off though. It looks good. Thanks. Yeah, it's happening. I say keep it. Death is coming. <laughs> Death is coming. <laughs> yep. So Death, on Death more positive coming. news, guys. Uh, <laughs> no, I don't care. I really. I, as I'm getting older, I'm just I've re- reached a point where I just do me and I don't care. If somebody says, you know, the people who are like complaining about my same outfit. I'm like, I have like twenty, literally <laughs> twenty white V necks. Yeah. That I alternate. The same blue jeans. It's like a classic jeans. look. Classic. Yeah. I, 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 am I classic? Yes. Am I? Not, am I an icon? Yes. Am I a? Uh, are you the next Oprah Winfrey? Yes. Definitely. Yes. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I'm prime time. I'll keep saying I'm prime time until this show. Prime time? Yeah. That's what I call myself now on the show. Prime time. Prime time. I'm just kidding. Like, it's a joke. I don't really mean it. I mean, yeah. we both took you very seriously. It yeah. seemed like you no. did. That's why I was saying. <laughs> you had this stern look that you're like. No, mm. we were just committing to the. Uh, I was committing oh. to the bit with you. I was like, yeah, for sure. That makes That's sense. Good. We just. Yeah. It's because we just met each other. Yeah, it's because so we just met. We're not there yet. Yeah, yeah, it's yeah, fine. Yeah, I have to. I have to really walk that line because, like, I can meet someone a few times and like yeah. very like cool and casual. But when I get comfortable with you, I get extremely sarcastic. Yeah, and it throws people off. Oh. And so I'm like, no, wait, I'm, like, I'm joking. Yeah. I, um, like I, I, I was doing a voiceover job and and I made this joke and everyone got like really serious and I was like, oh no no no, I'm just joking. Yeah. Like it's. It was like semi self deprecating, and they were. I was like, I promise, this isn't. I am joking. We can let's just do the. Be quiet. <laughs> no. Yeah, I I have the, I like I do this like I guess they're dad jokes. They're not really dad jokes, but I like repeating certain jokes. And mm-hmm. so with certain directors on the show, I'll go. Uh, they'll be like, give me some direction, and they're about to walk off. I'm like, oh, uh, accent or no accent, and they'll be, for a second they'll be like. Uh, I'm like I'm uh-huh. just kidding. Oh, oh, yeah. That's so good. Also, when you have TV, it's like you get a new director every episode, and it yeah. is interesting to sort of like their different personalities can yeah. lead to trouble if you make jokes that they don't get. I totally get that. Yeah, they've been cool though on my show. So yeah, same. We've had all good directors. Yeah. But. So Sophie, any? Hey, Sam. I always love act- asking actors, and you don't have to give names or specific projects. Any crazy acting stories off the top of your head? Working with me. It was Youth and Consequences. Uh, yeah. September, Actually, I think. we did get to work together, though, yeah. which was fun. We were not in a scene together. We got to be in a room together once. And yet she was like, wow, how <gasps> is he so talented? Yeah. Okay. We were in, like, different sections of the room. But uh, that's Sorry. totally not my crazy acting. I don't know if I have... Do I have one? Um, I don't think you... I haven't, I've ac- dealt actually with had really good luck. Yeah, you've dealt with interesting situations. Yeah, I've had some interesting people before that you're just like, that's an interesting move, but... A si- sorry, a situation in terms of, like, working in a certain oh, environment? Oh, I had an extra, can I tell an extra story? Oh, you have good extra stories. Uh, we had it on Youth and Consequences, we had an extra that we called Teen Sheriff, because he wore a cowboy hat and a belt buckle okay. and, like, boots, the whole shebang. Yeah. And uh, he... <laughs> Walked into frame once and looked straight down the barrel of camera and Colors. like nodded his hat. Why so, did he wink too? Yeah, and he winked. Why? I don't know. He was not asked back after that day, <laughs> but we called him teen chair for the rest of time. And uh, I had like a, a date to a school dance in the last episode, and everyone was like teasing me that they were going to bring teen sheriff in to be my date because I didn't have one yet. Gosh. Uh, so that's like my semi interesting story. Or you always have like. 
We had another extra who made the choice to like run up this hill during a take of going to school and he I don't think he realized he had to do it every time and we just watched him slowly lose steam as he'd like run up the hill and then he like scared his friends every time it was great dude that's hilarious yeah yeah he it, regrets it immediately. it was it was yeah. really funny it was like a hundred degree day and it was this big <laughs> wide shot and he made the choice to run up a hill and hide behind a bush and scare his friend he had to do it so many times and you yeah. just watch him die slowly but I don't um, know. That speaking of extras, I'm not. I can't say who said it, and I can't name the project, but it's somebody we both know. And I'll tell you after we're done. Okay. <laughs> um, the most cringeworthy acting story I've ever heard. Oh my goodness. Dealing with, like, something that happened on set. Ooh. Get ready. Tell me, please. So, for the people at home, extras are the people in the background. They don't have lines. They're usually just people walking or whatever. Yeah. Sometimes you'll get um a featured extra credit where like let's say. Um, you're in an elevator, right? And you'll tell the guy, oh, would you mind pressing uh, six, please? And they'll just press it. They won't have any lines. It'll just be like, they'll press it and their face is featured or they'll be right next to it. And so that's a featured extra. It's a little pay bump usually. Yeah. And usually that's handled with the assistant director afterwards. You talk to the PA, be like, hey, I just want to make sure this is um, a pay bump. Who do I talk to about that? And you do it at the appropriate time, of course. You don't do it like... Yeah. You wouldn't do it during filming, right? I don't think so. Oh, I feel. Like I mean, I've never had anyone do that. You wouldn't do it during filming to the no. director, would you? <gasps> no. No way. No. No way. Oh. Ooh. Oh. Oh, that Dude. hurts. So, this guy apparently was going. He was featured, and throughout the direction, throughout the takes or whatever he's like i get paid extra right because i'm i'm i'm, I'm featured right i get paid extra and the director kept trying to ignore him finally the director goes and by the way he doesn't even say this to the guy he says it to the ad he goes i can't that's lunch i can't i'm sorry i can't talk about finances or pay or reimbursement Right, like this. I can't. Oh Sorry, God. that's lunch, everybody. <gasps> Walks away. The guy starts trying to plead his case in a most awkward way. Like, no, no, I was just saying, because, like, you know, like, doing that thing. Oh, no. Early 20s. Like, mm. and then he was asked, thanked for his day of work, and then asked to leave. Oh my, oh my god. god, you see the dude, can you imagine being there and seeing that live? I would have I would have paid money to see that happen in person. I would not. I would have It's so walked, cringe. I, oh, I love it's it. It's so the I worst thing it. ever, but it's like, amazing. I'd have been like, "Oh my god, it's my agent. I got to go." Like no, and like try to walk off set. I love stuff like that. I love cringy moments. Was this in LA? Yes. Whoa, because LA extras usually get like the vibe. They understand. They usually that. get it because they're also like a lot of them do that. They go on all different shows and. They're very professional. I'll tell you this. For the most part. Ninety nine percent of the time I've worked with extras have been totally professional. Oh, for this sure. This is like a very very rare occurrence. That's why it's so cringeworthy because yeah. it's like that's totally not professional. That's not protocol at all. No. You wait till after, like you wait during lunch. You be like. Hey, I'm sorry. Uh, is that a feature? I, I think that's a featured, or is that a feature? Plus, that- I don't even think the directors are allowed to talk to the extras like through SAG rules. It's very weird. So, like, that's a strange encounter. Yeah, mm, yeah that's second true. AD. They have usually, to go yeah. through the second AD. So sometimes, like, a director will try and give a note, and they have to like trail it through. So that's really interesting. Yeah. Oh my gosh, that Very poor cringe. that guy. I'm cringing for well, him right learned. now. Well, you, yeah, dude, learn you your have, lesson, man. Yeah, wow. you sometimes <laughs> just have to learn the hard way, but like. But how, like, so tacky to be like, hey, I'm supposed to get paid. Ex-. Like, guy. Yeah. Just calm down. You're not yeah. the star of the show here. Like, you're being featured as an extra. Like, it's just know your place in the whole circle of life on set, too, you know? And also just be a chill person. Like, if there's one piece of advice that I wish I could have given myself or any anyone else is just... Not sound rude, but speak when spoken to. Come mm. prepared and pay attention. And I, uh, I don't think yeah, that's that's not rude at all. That's no. Keep no. your head down, do your work. And, yeah, yeah, exactly. Because like a lot, like we're, especially working on a show, the people that we brought back the most um, were the ones that were just like 
present, paying attention, like were nice, like nice and fun to be around, but also understood the line of like, yeah. Hey, like there's like either like I I'm I'm guest casting, know where I'm supposed to be or where I'm not supposed to be, or just knowing that like okay, this is where we're supposed to be professional and not be doing stuff right now. Yeah. Um, you have to know how to read a room really well. How did they deal with you then on set? I have no idea. <laughs> I was so, especially as a kid, I I, I was kidding. But. No, no, I just <laughs> no, I but like, like it's, no, but like honestly, when I was younger, it it took me a while to like kind of fully grasp the fact that like, oh, this is a full time job, like this is oh, a job okay. job. Yeah. Um, but like you and know, that's fair when you're nine though. Like they do, or when you're I don't know how old you were at the time, but ten. Yeah, I always have a lot of people <laughs> that's like give yourself more credit. There's like, a learning you know, curve to things. Yeah. You know, my friend, uh, Jonte, he does an amazing job of uh, being an acting coach. And he he coached, um, like, young kids, like, you know, yeah. 9, 8, 10, I think, around that age group. And he does a great job of, like, teaching them, like, hey, this is professional. This is a job. And the way he speaks to them, it's like night and day, night and day. And it's amazing. Like, some people can actually talk to people and just, like, especially children and kind of guide them through that adult wow. world, you know? Because it's very weird so for kids. That's so amazing. I have no idea how to explain that to kids. Like, yeah. I've had, I've had like, parents ask me questions along mm. those lines, and it's it's a thing that I'm like, I don't know how to explain, but I think they'll probably get it. You just put them in the environment, but it is hard. Yeah. It, it's a skill to be able to sort of adapt to professionalism at such a young age, and it's nice when you have people that can guide you along that Also, way. a part of being a kid and a teenager is not knowing what to do and figuring it out and falling on your face and like just trying to figure life out and having to figure it out in a professional environment can also be kind of stressful because you're just like oh this is my career this is my life but I'm also just trying to figure Mm. out how to be human being and and navigate spaces when I taught kids in martial arts I've noticed that like it's very similar to that because it's so disciplined like how do you get this like rambunctious person to like calm down and it's when you start showing them like whenever you do focus whenever you do apply discipline and listen you start being able to do these cool things with your body you know what i mean and they get excited like oh i can do look at what i'm doing like oh i'm in control of this organism (laughs) you know what i mean so it's it's very it's very similar to that i feel like or at least parallels no, it definitely is. Yeah. It's just like a thing about teaching kids in general. Would that ever get frustrating having to teach kids for for two hours at a time, right? Like hour and a half? You mean martial arts? Yeah, for martial arts. I liked it. Because those kids would come in and they needed that. You could tell yeah. they needed it or they had fun or you knew the what kind of benefit it would give them in the future. Were you emotionally exhausted though? Because I... I... Some people love kids though. Like some people do yeah. that as like that's like... I'll tell you what... Yeah. When you see a kid after, like, a few weeks, when he first comes in, is out of control, and then he comes in, like, after a few weeks, he's, like, bowing when he comes in, and he's doing his form. He's practicing it at home. Yeah. That's, like, the best feeling in the world. Yeah. And you see kids yeah. who are, like, oh, now they get excited when they can punch correctly, or they get confidence whenever they start sparring with each other. They're not scared anymore. You're, like, oh, cool. I've helped this tiny human be prepared for the next obstacle in life and now they're not yeah. scared of like altercation or mm-hmm. they're able to defend themselves or defend their family when you put the stakes like that it's not tiring or it's not yeah. annoying it's just part of the process of course it's going to be like challenging don't get me wrong yeah. and sometimes you just want to shake them but you can't do that um, <laughs> just like you yeah. know strangle them yeah. I mean, but it's but like that's you make illegal. a difference in their life <laughs> which is cool yeah exactly um, speaking of differences in people's lives 2019 coming up I always like to ask people what's what's going to change positively for you what's what's the goals Sophie mm. start with you or wait if you need time we'll go to Khan. no I, like I stay might, on no, Sophie no I think I, I think I might need some time to think about it <sighs> which is weird because it's fully almost the end of the year I'm just so in denial of <laughs> New Year's I'll, always I'll, I'll, I'll tell you some stuff here from me then yeah uh, I'm going to focus a lot on experiences with people I love and care about uh, going doing fun stuff with them taking a trip to japan with my close guy friends that should be a lot of fun um i am going to uh we got some big plans for the podcast that we can't really talk about too much right now but they're coming up i'm New coming studio, back though. for five more episodes guys oh no seriously guys you're more than welcome to come back whenever i, I love talking with you guys um 
but you'll be in the new studio too, so that should be. Oh, oh I do yes. want to see that. That's yeah, exciting. I'd love to check that out. With it, we'll have the open window. Yeah. And I mean, it'll it'll be pretty cool. So podcast or excuse me, uh, radio show stuff is gonna be doing great. Um, acting, you know, the show premieres March seventh, which I'm really excited for people to see. Oh, that's and exciting. then acting, you know, it's kind of up in the air right now. Yeah, I'll do some writing on my own, but uh, my dad's getting better from his accident, which I'm really thankful for. The youngest brother is going to dental school. Supportive of that. I'm trying to think what else. William, the guy who made the music, he's doing good things with his pr- career producing music. That's awesome. Things, things seem to be, to be like really l- lining up really well for 2019. Yeah, being more disciplined too. Mm. Getting better at piano. More working out. Maybe jujitsu. Jujitsu. Brazilian jujitsu, like a like at least a private coach or something. But was fitness always a part of your life, or are you no. just introducing it now? No. They always, I was really lucky. Parents always forced it. Smart. Yeah, soccer, taekwondo. Always was outside playing, rollerblading, playing football. Like with the neighbor kids, not like yeah. real football. Although it would be demolished. Um, bicycling, exploring. Yeah. Smart. Nice. 2019, okay. Sophie. Okay, I think, I mean, I have the show premiering too, which is exciting. <clears throat> but I think I'm this year sort of going to focus on being okay during the in-between and the downtime and learning how to fill that with things that make me happy because I am such a work person like I feel most fulfilled when I'm working so I go a little insane when you know as actors we have long hiatuses or we don't know when our next job is and I think this year you know once I wrap the show I want to be able to like be okay with my downtime and sort of fill that with um I don't know, think other things that make me happy is mainly people. Yeah. Uh, and also I do want to travel. So I think that's for me is sort of learning how to just like accept my present state in life and be okay with that. Not in like a passive way, but in a positive way. Cool. We got to make that Europe trip happen, by the way. Yeah, we we've been trying it. to go to Europe, but it's like we it's a good problem to have. We keep booking things. Like one, one of, of us, us will work. Always... This, we're going with, we want to go with our friend Cameron. And one of us nice. keeps getting a job at the time that we think we're going to go. So we'll see. Maybe this year. It's so hard. To be it's hard. <laughs> Life is hard. Um, yeah. Uh, I know you're going to fight me on this a little bit because I overfocus on my work. Oh, yeah, for sure. But I think I need to refocus on my work because um, I come off like I'm very focused sometimes, but I feel myself weaning away from like my uh, my discipline so I want to kind of go back and, and refocus on my career and, and be more productive with it and um, just trust myself to start developing my own projects. And, and uh, yeah, I, j- I just want to be more productive in my career and, and go back to my own discipline and, and focus on it in a healthy way and introduce taking care of my own mental and physical health more because that's something I did not do at all the past few years. Um, so I definitely want to start merging the, the two of those things, my health and my career, in a, in a more seamless way. Great. Like that. That's works. awesome. All positive things, guys. Yeah. Right. Well, it's that time. Sad face. Big time. We'll this was that. a lot of fun, by the it way. It was fun. Oh, thanks, guys. Oh, my first podcast ever, Certain Strong. Yeah. It won't get any better. <laughs> I can't imagine it will. I promise you it won't. I'll just, like, say this will always be the best. That's, that's fair. <laughs> um... If people want to find you on your Instagram, Twitter, just your names? Uh, Sophie Reynolds. It's Sophie One Reynolds is my Instagram handle. It's very annoying. But yeah, yeah. you could just find me. Uh, mine's just the Karin Brar, but my Twitter is currently deactivated, so you can find me on Instagram. Why is so. it deactivated? Uh, it's a whole long story, but my <laughs> birthday was like 1998, so I changed it to 99, which it actually is. And then Twitter was like, you're locked out of your account. You weren't 13 when you made the account. And so now it's uh, deactivated. And I'm working with Twitter to get my account back. It's a very strange rule. What? Yeah. Yeah. It's like, you know, when you, like, kind of, like, lie about your birthday and then you finally change your birthday? I, you probably never actually do that with social media age-wise. But mm. I think my... Are you calling I think, We Sam old? <laughs> no, all I'm just saying social media didn't exist. But, okay. It did. Yeah. Well, I mean, college. I mean, it did. Like, MySpace and stuff. College. When you were... Mm. Yeah, yeah, High yeah. High school was, like, Zanga. What yeah. is Zanga? 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 <laughs> Zanga? It's like a live blog. Or it's like yeah. it's a blog. Yeah. Blogging site. Okay, like that's one I've never heard of. Wow. Zanga, yeah, it was big. Was it like the early okay. Tumblr? Yeah, I think so. I guess you could call it the early Tumblr. Look at them apples. 
Interesting. Is Zanga still a thing? Oh, I think they, they yeah, they re, they repurposed it. <laughs> they usually do. It's like MySpace is like music now or something. Is it music? Yeah. I can't, I can't really turn yeah, yeah. it too, too oh much, but. Ah, it's okay. Zanga. Yeah. Anyway. Wow. Um, Look at that. Well. They're a blog site. We'll have you guys back on at some point in the new year. Oh, thank you. Um, maybe after your trip or before, whenever that happens. We'll see what happens. Yeah. Dude, 2018, Michael, we're done. We're done. We'll be back. Hold on. I want to give people an exact date so people don't like, where are you coming back on, man? <laughs> you want me to play the music? Uh, You know what? Yeah, play the music. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, we will be back for a brand new episode of We Sam's World. January 17th, Thursday, Thursday, January 17th. I messed that up. I don't care. Day before Karin's birthday. Are you serious? He's 18. January 18th. Gonna be 20. Get ready wow. for the biggest mental breakdown. <laughs> Dude, you're gonna cry so much. I know. <laughs> uh, I'll have um, to be there for it. We'll be posting on our social, teasing you guys with the new uh, studio pics. Uh, we'll do some amazing special rerun episodes of We Sam's World on Adobe Radio on Thursdays in between. Until then, make sure you follow us on uh, Instagram, We Sam's World, Twitter, stay up to date. My Instagram and Twitter, We Sam, Keish, Michael, you're on Instagram, right? I am. Yeah. What is it? M A. It's Mike, but don't worry about it. Okay. <laughs> we're, we're good. All, All right. right. Good. Cool. Cool. He wants no one following him. Uh, <laughs> I'm going to find you now, Michael, just so yeah. I can follow you. Okay. Uh, thank you to you guys for coming on today as the last episode for 2018. Appreciate it. Uh, thank you to Adobe Radio for everything that you've done for us. Thank you for Nice Guy Digital, Brett and Katie. Thank you to Steph. Thank you to all the fans. Thanks for subscribing, leaving your awesome reviews. Thank you, guys. Totally blessed. Love you all. Hey, Michael. We're out. We out. <laughs>